Hi, everyone. This is Trina B with Girl Let's Talk Atlanta. Today, we are interviewing Miss Denise Moss. Hey, Denise, how are you? Hey, Trina, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. So can you tell everyone who you are and what is it that you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am Denise Mose, and I am a teacher by trade. I've taught for about 14 years and um, avid traveler, big time traveler, and um, most recently spent uh, a year and a half living in China as a foreign teacher. And I guess that's what brought us here today. Yes, awesome. So can you tell us about that experience um, um, moving and like why did you just make that ultimate like leap to just leave everything? <laughs> and everything. I had a, a very good friend. I was telling a good friend of mine, Michelle, that um, although I love my, my teaching position, as a professor, love what I was doing, had good money, was not in fear of losing my job, had a nice condo. I mean, we're doing great, you know. Uh, I'm single, I'm not married, I have no kids, so it's just me, so I spoil myself. So uh, <laughs> I, um, but I told her, I said, you know, I just, I, I'm kind of unfulfilled, I kind of want to do more. I kind of, I don't know what that more is, but I want to do something more. And she said, you know, I, um, I send teachers to China all the time. And I just said, uh, great. Okay. You know, and she said, well, you said something different. She said, you might want to consider going to China. Wow. And I said, well, you know, I, how about something else? Like, how about Charlotte? How about California? How about something in the U.S.? <laughs> um, and she said, well, you know, I know uh, Frank's son, he owns several schools in China. How about you talk to him? So long story short, we had the Skype interview. It went well. I liked him. He liked me. We hit it off great. And uh, he said, when are you coming to China? Now, wow. this was September of 2014. And um, I said, I well, we'll see. You know, long story short, uh, I was in China by January within four months. I was, so it was, um, it moved very quickly. I sold my condo, I gave a lot of stuff away to um, donations and um, got my visa and then got my uh, travel visa and then got my work visa and went to work in China. Wow, wow. Yeah. So when you <laughs> the culture shock, like what was the dynamic like when you first got there? Well, when I got to the airport in Wenzhou, China, uh, there were no black people and I, mm -hmm. I that and that I, I knew tr uh, tr uh, Tina Tina was my interpreter but she was also one of the co-owners of the school so um, I knew what she looked like we had Skype twice so uh, but I said I said now I'm I said I'm African-American so I'm going to stick out very easily for you so uh, we, we we hit it off you know over the phone and stuff so uh, she found me in the airport and I was once I deplaned and got my luggage and stuff she was there she was there so um, it was quite different. I, you know, I've been stared at before, but not like that because <laughs> most, of, most, Amer most Americans, we go to the Great Wall, we go home. We might go to Shanghai and go home. We don't stay uh, in, a, in a different culture and just stay there. So it was shocking for them to see me every day, uh, talk to me, uh, and just all those things. Stare while I was eating, we went to eat, they just stared and, and like, you know, because that was something quite different for them and, and for me too. But it was a, a beautiful learning experience and um, it was great. You know, a lot of culture shock, but I helped them and they helped me. Awesome. Awesome. So you wrote a book um, called Blind Faith. So can you tell me about the book? My book, Blind Faith, is all about uh, my life in China. People kept saying, Denise, you should really write your book about your experience there. I know folks who want to go to China. And, or just go abroad and what was your experience like? So the more I thought about it, the more I said, you know, I really, really should do that because I got so many requests. So the book is about from takeoff to touchdown, from takeoff to touchdown, from me going to the, the Chinese consulate in Atlanta, uh, get, going to Duluth, Georgia, and getting my travel visa and my work visa approved. Uh, meeting with the consulate and having them approve to like me, which I didn't know you need to knew that you I didn't think you knew that. I knew that going to China, you couldn't just go to China. I knew you needed a visa to go to China because there are certain places you can't just go, like Nepal. You can't just go to Tibet. Nope. You, you need 
you know, and that's China. You need permission to be to be over there. So right. um, that was crazy. I'm like, oh wow, oh okay. So met with them and pressed them, and they're like, okay, yeah, she can go. So and then I got my year and a half visa, and I was off. I flew out of Atlanta mm -hmm. straight to straight to straight to China. Right, right. Yeah, it's all about that. So it's all about my first Ch my, my first Chinese wedding. Uh, it's mm -hmm. all about having authentic Chinese food. And here's what I learned the most. You know, here in America, when you have a Chinese meal, after that, you have a fortune cookie. So when I had my first Chinese meal there, I looked for the fortune cookie. And um, Laura, uh, who's also a Chinese, but her, her American name is Laura. I said, so where's the, the cookie, fortune cookie? And she said, and she said you Americans. <laughs> oh. she, said, we don't, she said, we don't do that here. And I said, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry, you know. And wow. she said, "No, oh, I understand why you Americanized that stuff, but we don't, we don't do a fortune cookie." So that amazed me. I'm like, "Wow, so many things that we do in this culture that are not even done in the culture where it came from." So, wow. All about that. Every experience traveling, uh, my students, my first day, um, my first everything, just there was wonderful, and it, it's all in the book. All right, awesome. So. From going there to coming back here to the States, what would you say was your most, um, something that you take most from just going over there the first time? Would you travel aboard again? Would you do it all over again? <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. I, 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 I probably would. You know, I'm still single, not married, no kids. Uh, it'll probably stay that way because I, lo I love to travel, you know. And yeah. um, I mean, I have my niece, Madison, and she's spoiled rotten to death. <laughs> that's my fault that is because when I travel I take her with me but um you, when, when I was there I was there in 2015 so I was there during the Obama years so it was wonderful to travel it was free to travel there were no masks you know like we have now so would I do it now I wouldn't do it now um when all this calms down all this calms down maybe you know I, I want my, my niece to see uh, Shanghai and to see the Great Wall and to see all those beautiful things that are over there. But um, when, when I got back, you know, my boss, she said, come back, please come back. And I said, well, I, I did my year. I'm good, you know. But um, what, I, what I take with me is how strong I was. I knew I was strong, Trina, but I'm really strong. I, I went to a different continent. Mm -hmm. I left everything I knew and everyone I knew and went over there and immersed myself in a completely different culture right. and I rocked it you know I met lifelong friends uh, but 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 that, that started here I said you know what this can either make me better or yeah. I'll be right back where I ended up but I made it in my mind to say you know what I'm here I'm going to embrace all that China has to show me and I'm going to spread this black girl magic all over Asia yes yes <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful and I just I take with me how, how strong I really was to do that. Because before I prayed, I, before I, I said, Lord, cover my dad, cover my twin sister, cover my brother. I said, keep them for a year. Until I get, keep them for a year until I get back. You know, let nothing happen to them while, I'm, while, I, while I experience this. Wow. So you say you have a twin? Twin sister. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh That's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. we are, and we are night and day. <laughs> my my best friend, love her. That is my, that's my girl. But we are night and day. Yeah. My yes. Night. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So being that you, you showed so much courage, so much strength to be able to just go over there and be happy and experience different things. Um, when you got back here to the state, um, was it like, so different opportunities, I know you said that you, you have a business, So when you started the business, um, or were in transition in the business and other things, were you as fearful, as afraid as you were before you left, or now it comes kind of easy since you've taken that big leap of, you know, of faith? When, when I came back here, I, I just knew I would be hired by a bunch of cool corporations, because here's this black girl that is from Alabama. Yes. You know, good education, went to China, lived, did well, came. I just knew I'd be a hot commodity and right. no one hired me. 
no one. And my dad said, well, you're, you're a threat. Mm -hmm. you're, you, you, can't, you can't be black and female and awesome and go to China and do well and come back and get a job. Nope. And, right. and, and it's amazing because I went to people who I knew who looked like me, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. I knew needed my skills for their company, and they right. did not. So I did what Oprah said. Oprah said, hire yourself. Yes. So I, 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 just, I just put myself out there. I got with good people. Um, I got with a good agent who I have now. Um, yes. And we just, we said, let's do this. Let's just promote this. Let's do this. So I got with my old contacts. Um, the Florida Sun, I've been with them for 15 years. I do, an, I do two articles every week for the Florida Sun that I maximize. I have about three millennials I hired when my book came out. I beefed up my website, beefed up my Instagram, beefed up my look. I got with my good friend, Denisha and Michael Elliott, got some better pictures. So I got with people who I knew what they were doing and yes. could get to where I was going. So I hired young people. I'm, yes. 40, I, I'm 47. And I know a few things, but I don't know what Adora and Orange, who are two people who I hired to make me look good. Adora uh, did my podcast, and it's a, it's a cartoon illustration. And Orange, uh, Lee Orange, did my website and got me with uh, PayPal and Square. You know, so these are people who just said, you need this, you need that. I'm like, okay, well, okay, let, let's do, okay. What we need to do. <laughs> and so, I know like, older people, they're like, okay, you just tell me all this stuff. Just do it. Can I just give you the money? <laughs> what do you do? Right. They, they have my credit card. I'm like, what do I need to do? Okay, let me send you PayPal. Let me send you the cash out. You know, yes. so that I, cause I don't, I know something, but they know young people, millennials and Gen Z, yes. they understand yes. the media. They understand followers. They understand the right people. They understand things like this, us doing this Zoom right now to meet and have a conversation. So uh, I hired them and it, it was the best thing I ever did. And they're the, and they're the best at what they do, you know? So, oh, that's, yeah. that's amazing. I'm going to get the opportunity to speak with you. Um, are you in Georgia or surrounding Georgia? I I am, I'm, I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm three and a half hours away. Uh, my aunt, Aunt Ernestine, Aunt Ernestine uh, Gary Weaver is in uh, Midtown Atlanta. I see her at least twice a year. If not, well, I did before. When I was traveling, I saw her all the time. Cause I was flying out of Atlanta. I would stay with her condo. So right. I love uh, so many friends, family. I've gotten Atlanta, so I'm not that far. I that I, far. Awesome. I have family in Alabama as well. I was just asking because I would love to meet you one day. I would I, love to hear your stories in person because I was actually thinking about like, because I have kids um, now, like once they get older, you know, and I get older, I'm thinking of doing something like that. I really want to travel aboard. I really want to do and handle business in different areas of the country. I want to experience different cultures as well. And I also want them to be able to experience those things also, because I do that, that is definitely a part of the self discovery journey when you go. Yes. Um, and to seeing new things and seeing new sites and understanding the way that different things work in different environments that opens mm. your life so mm. much and it mm. just makes you realize um, how awesome your life already is you know awesome you have it already so therefore we cannot continue to dwell on the things that we don't have just be grateful for what we have and the opportunities and advantages that we have um, even though there are a lot of opportunities and advantages us as black women still have to fight for um, yes. but at the same time we still have a lot of privileges that we should be thankful for and not because of they giving them to us because we are making these things happen ourselves not right. because nobody is giving anything to us <laughs> right. Right. Really when, when I was over there there were several people I met the further I traveled when I was in Dubai, when I was in Bangkok, when I was in Taiwan, I saw black families and their kids living over there. So by the time they came back to the States, they could speak, you know, Indian. When I, when I was in India, they could speak all these languages. I met about three or four black students who were there who were fluent in Mandarin. So not only is it beautiful to see these other countries and continents, but to pick up the language that makes yes. you an even better asset when you come back to the States for a job. So yes. that's, one, and that's one reason why I chose to study Mandarin while I was there, because I said, I said, how much better would I be if I can speak this language in my own country and get around? And that's been a benefit to me as well. So 
Oh yeah, you can, yeah. I saw people with their families picking up and moving and living abroad because the pay is very good, and uh, you see the world that way much cheaper. If I were to fly now from from the USA to Dubai, it's about five thousand per seat. You know, wow. when I was over there, I I spent two hundred RMB in Chinese money. You know, right. so I spent all week. You know, so yeah. <laughs> I couldn't do that from the USA, but over there you can because you're right, you're right next to it. So yeah, make sure you do that. Just tr travel in its own education. And yeah. it's beautiful to travel and see what else is out there besides what we're used to. And that's the comfort. It's like, you know, I know that if I know that I'm going to stay here. Well, I get it, but you won't learn that much that way if you stay in one place. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I tell people move around and move around in your circle as well, because People like you, for instance, you travel different places and things like that. And if you have friends or in your circle, they know those things. You can tell those, tell them those things as well. So circle, sure. <laughs> new landscapes and new places is what I like to call it. <laughs> Absolutely, it's it's critical. And and you know, and I said, I said, well, I'm already here. I may as well go over there. I'm gonna go yep. over there. So I can speak <laughs> But, and, and, then, and then being African-American, being female, it's more critical if we go. Because our counterparts, they've been going to Thailand. They've been going, you know, backpack through Europe. You know, white kids do that all the time. Right. You know, it's very rare that black kids do a, like, like um, Malia Obama had a gap year. She just took a gap year off and, and traveled and, and worked and just saw the world. And, you know, yeah. black kids wouldn't do that. You know, but, we're, but that's changing. It's more right. and more for that now. And that is a beautiful way to see the world and um and it's not that expensive either so yeah, yeah. i like the fact that it's changing i like the fact to just see like the growth in different people um and see that people really want to explore because you know my dad and my mom my mom side of the family they live in alabama from alabama um, and from illinois as well but it's like you know they're older so they like stationary we're not going nowhere i'm not getting no right. money this and that, so, that type of stuff. so it's like right. okay, you don't have to see anything but the more that our generations yeah. um, can continue to succeed and continue to grow people like in my generation and you know on up like more people are really wanting to see the world they want to explore more they want to get out and do things because and i think people are also realizing that we only have one life and I think a lot of the times people don't realize that they don't, they don't get multiple lives. <laughs> One. <laughs> so it's like, you don't have multiple lives. You might as well live it how you want to and enjoy it and, and be dedicated to all those great things that you like. Well, Denise, I appreciate you for joining me uh, this afternoon. Do you have anything else that you would like to share? Uh, I just encourage everyone to whatever that 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 voice is is that's you know picking at you that voice that is that's listening to you that voice that you're listening to that voice that's telling you to try it you should do it. and it's important to be fearful because that reminds you that you're human but if you don't do it it won't get done so whatever I don't care what it is I would try it. So I don't care whatever your, your thing is. If, it's, if you wake up doing that and you wake up dreaming of it, you should be doing it. So go do it. Awesome. Do it. awesome. So where can they find the book at? Uh, on my website, uh, www.drdenisemose.com. Uh, it's on Amazon. And of course, it's on, um, thankfully, it's on Barnes and Noble's Books a Million. Uh, lots of exposure, which I'm really grateful for. Uh, but buy it for me so I can, I, can, I, can, I can sign it for you and give it out to you. So go to my website or Google Denise Mose, and it's right there for you. All right. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. 